Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering Micron Summit 2017, brought to you by Micron. We're back, wrapping up Micron Summit. We're here at the 34th floor of One World Trade Center. My name is Dave Vellante, and I'm joined by David Floyer and Nick Allen of Wikibon. And we've been here talking all day about Micron moving up the stack, innovating, bringing out NVMe, NVMe over fabric. Um, Micron is a company with real tailwinds right now. Uh, the micro, uh, DRAM prices are up. Supply is down, there's been consolidation in the industry. Samsung is not bombing prices like they were you know, a few years ago, and, and as a result, uh, Micron stock is up. Uh, they got the existing CEO, Mark Durkin, you know, uh, leaving. New CEO coming in right at the peak time. Uh, a lot of good things going on for Micron. Uh, the questions are, you know, as they move up the stack, Darren Thomas mentioned this a little bit. Um, we're not trying to compete with our <laughs> customers. Okay, so you know what's come up. It's certainly some of the folks that I've talked to in their ecosystem have said, hmm, what's going on? Um, but as Mark Durkin said, it's inevitable. And I think we've believed that, David Floyer, for some time now. Yeah. Uh, your take on today, what you heard, what's real, what's to be determined? Well, my overall take uh, is that this is the start of an even bigger disruption than we've had over the last 10 years. So this is, to me, one of the biggest disruptions that is taking place. In what is, the, what, in what's the this, what do you mean? And that is the uh, ability to bring in the fabric uh, side of things, so that you have a balance between memory, storage, and the fabric itself. And you can get from any plate, from you can get to data from any processor in your in your uh, uh, set of nodes uh, in in roughly the same time, within uh, within half a percent uh, of the same time as you can the rest of the data. That is game changing, and that allows you to design systems on a much bigger scale than you could ever do before, and and design systems to be able to deal with. Uh, orders of magnitude more data than they ever could before. Uh, that's going to take a long time to play out in terms of any fundamental change in the architecture is going to mean a lot of change to the applications, to the, in, in, to the stack, everything is going, it has to change on the way there. But the end point itself is a uh, revolution in, in my opinion. Nick, Nick, you helped to start Wikibon. Um, you're back, you just published uh, storage key issues for 2017, and in there you asked the question, uh, where will your data persist and why? And then you had a statement, uh, uh, paraphrasing Gene Amdahl's law, the best I.O. is no I.O. So a lot of what we're talking about today is eliminating I.O. Um, thoughts on what you heard today? You know, you're really good at squinting through the marketing messages and picking out the, the weak spots. <laughs> <laughs> what do you see as you know real, and what needs needs work? Well, I, I'll start off and say bravo to Micron. Somebody had to do it, yeah. and you know they they partnered and and done the hard stuff. Now the customers have to have to have to beta test, and like you said, they're changing the ecosystem a little bit by moving up moving up the stack. We thought that was in, in, inevitable as well. Um, we're not going to get rid of I.O. I mean, <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, if we could do it all in memory, we would. We can't. Uh, this is a pretty good, darn good alternative. Right. Okay. Um, I wanted to ask you guys about uh, some of the other initiatives going on. David, you've had a lot of people debate you about Flash, the future of Flash, the capacity of the industry to be able to deliver, um, whether it's Memristor, 3D Crosspoint. Um, what do you see there as far as alternatives to Flash? Well, uh, the driving force for, for Flash originated uh, from Steve Jobs uh, uh, taking all the production from Samsung for, uh, for Flash and starting it in the consumer area. And that has been the major driver is the consumer area. So enterprise to a large extent has been on the coattails of the uh, consumer, uh, the business. Um, the challenge of 3D XPoint, which you, you mentioned, um, is that there isn't as yet a user uptake of it. Um, and if you don't have those volumes, then bringing the price point down with sufficient volume is going to, in my view, is going to be a challenge until there's 
some sort of capability or some large scale application which is going to take use of it. So integrating that into today's architecture, there are some places clearly where it can go, um, but it, in terms of uh, in volume in, uh, uh, attempts, other ways of doing it, uh, such as uh, protecting DRAM or DRAM plus flash, are probably going to be used in preference to D, uh, uh, 3D e X-ray. E even as, say, a memory extension or a, like an expand a persistent expanded storage, right. e even... Well, you'd be able to do that, that yeah. by putting DRAM yeah. and then having flash behind it and do a similar sort of thing with the protected DRAM. So you're not optimistic for, for flash alternatives, that, really, is, right, at this point? At this point. I think they have to come up through the, uh, through the consumer or IoT areas before they, uh, before they get to get is, is this something you've looked at? You, have, you, you agree with that assertion? Well, from a, from a pricing standpoint, absolutely. And <clears throat> right now, to really effectively use uh, th these coming memories, if you will, um, you need to put another tier in there, and then you need an application that wants that tier, and that's pretty problematic. Um, so there's going to be some bleeding edge users that are, that are yeah, going to, you know, yeah. a mm -hmm. adopt this stuff. But if, without the the volume from the consumer, it's just not going to compete on price. It might might compete on performance and might compete in 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 the niches, um, but not the way Flash take took the market. You guys heard my comments. I said I was reading the Micron press release and said the centralized pool of storage, improved utilization, <laughs> you know, improved performance. You know, they didn't mention, I don't think explicitly availability, but they could have. Um, all the things that I said we were supposed to be solving with the storage area networks uh, that really didn't get solved, um, even though there was a lot of value that was well, delivered. But th they solved but the problems at that particular time. Yeah, it's just it was uh, it was so bad, I guess. Yes. But um, uh, but it it really didn't carry us through uh, certainly the cloud era, uh, yes. and so and, and part of the issue was the the pace of of, of data growth. Um, and maybe it was just architecturally not designed to accommodate all, all that. But maybe we could start with this whole notion of NVMe and NVMe over fabric um, to Nick's point of uh, reducing I.O. You know, with direct access. Maybe you could explain that sort of the NVMe and then we could talk about the F concept and how, right. how, how likely it is to get adopted and maybe we could project some kind of time frames. So, so we start with NVMe. Uh, NVMe uh, was a direct attach to the PCIe bus uh, to a server, um, and that it, that whole protocol is much faster, much less overhead, a retool protocol, uh, which replaces the SCSI stack. So that's the first stage: is how do I interface at high speed with low latency to the PCIe? Uh, bus in the uh, in the in the central processing system, so that's the first systems uh, stage, um, and that allows you what you had back in the pre-SAN days, which is ultra-fast processors and directly attached to those processors, all the storage directly to that processor. But now you've got all the problems. How do I send a second copy to somewhere else? How do I spread that data with uh, erasure coding? All of those issues are still getting in the way. Uh, you've got the same problems that SAN was trying to, uh, to, to solve. Uh, NVMe over fabric takes uh, the, puts in a fabric, uh, a 10 gigabit uh, converged ethernet fabric. Uh, uses uh, a, a protocol, Rocky protocol, which is RDMA over converged Ethernet. Uh, uses that protocol to provide very, very low latency, high speed uh, uh, fabric over which you can send that data. And that's the breakthrough here is the overhead of that fabric is down to the five microsecond overhead. So if I'm going locally, that's, uh, they're, they're saying 195, that's going to come down to maybe 50 microseconds uh, in the next couple of years. Um, the overhead of going outside your particular processor to anywhere else in the network is just five microseconds. So that's uh, today it's half a percent. In the future, that might be, uh, you know, uh, 
5% or 10%, but it's still very, very low compared with the SAN environment. And that, that changes the whole architecture. It, it enables you to share that data uh, across anywhere and allows any processor to access any data across that whole of that 250. And that's why in that range. report that you published with the the area graph, you see the middle, which is the red, which is the traditional sand just getting squeezed from the hyperscale yes. above yes. and from the enterprise server right. sand down below. Yes. So Nick, in your opinion, how quickly will this be adopted? What are some of the key issues that users need to understand before they can hop onto this stuff? Well, the one thing they didn't talk about today was cost. Uh, I don't think we, we have pricing at all, and the Mellanox stuff isn't isn't cheap, and it's 100 gig, not 10. Um, Did I say 100? Yeah, well, yeah, we all get it all mixed yeah. up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Microseconds, milliseconds, <laughs> nanoseconds. Yeah. Okay, so cost. Well, the, the, number, the, the number that stood out to me today was that 10% of the new capacity shipped in 2016 was flash. Right? Well, just that's going to be double for 2017, another year or two. It's done. Yeah. Right, we just got replacement capacity, and, and we, you know, drives are not dying. But it, 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 the adoption rate, as David says, this is revolutionary. Mm -hmm. And um, over this fabric, it, Sands did a lot of what they needed to do. And now this is a high-speed sand with much less less uh, latency and, and overhead. Um, and getting that data closer to the processors, you're just going to process more data more quickly, just like they, you know, what they want to do in the, in the sub-second response time, right? Yeah. So it seems like, well, if we think about, let's stay on sort of customer implications. I, I think, let's start from the top, CIO, CXO, C, Chief Data Officer as well. I think because it's all about the data, you kind of start with how, how data value is mm -hmm. really the piece. Yeah. Um, this is and we, this is we heard people talking about data value today, um, but really understanding how data supports your monetization strategy is kind of, to me, a starting point for the CIO, chief data officer, and then really form a partnership with your line of business and then understand what skills you need really to take advantage of, of this pending change. And that gets into some of the organizational actions. Uh, to me, it's all about the developers. You know, we're talking about yeah. these new applications that are being developed. Um, I would bring those guys in early to the conversation uh, and then have my architects sit, sit with them and say, okay, how can we better service these individuals? How can we change the workflows, you know, dramatically improve the productivity of the organization and then figure out all the technology integration activities that I need, need to do. But I, I would start with the value of data. Far, it seems like far too many organizations, you know, understand that let alone understand how data supports the monetization strategy. So would you guys add anything to that just in terms of what customers should be doing? So, so uh, I think the key of this all is uh, that you can do in real time or near real time is of so much higher value than that which you can get to you know, a week later or two weeks later or whatever it is. That, that's an enormous drop off in value. So if you can design systems to get any data that's necessary for that system to operate, that is a huge potential increase in value of the data that you, you have there, dealing with it straight away. So I think that would be one of the principles that I would give to the, uh, to the uh, coders that they, or, or the designers, application designers is, go away from your old constraints of, you know, that I, I can't get as much data as I want, or I can just assume you can get any data that you want, and then start with that as your design point. Um, and the second, po the second part about it is, uh, if, you can, if you can do your analytics in the same time, I mean, obviously there's two levels of analytics. There's the, the working model, and then there's your research model, which is improving your working model. Um, so if you can improve that working model uh, to run in real time with your current uh, systems of, of record, if you can get those two together, you are going to be able to automate a huge amount of activity which currently goes from the system of record to people to decide things. You can eliminate it and simplify the business processes in a very profound way. Mm -hmm. 
and looking for the opportunities that where the most uh, return on that is seems to be obviously the, the, the number one thing the CIO should be doing. It was interesting to hear from Micron the value to them was using these analytics to help them with production issues, with utilization of, of capital, with uh, productivity uh, yield from their, from their fabs, et cetera. Those were the issues that are most important to Micron. To other companies, it'll be something else. Uh, but focusing on the areas of, uh, of uh, business value and uh, that digital transformation will be, uh, uh, this will allow digital transformation to happen. Uh, and I think once you've got that overall concept and, and, uh, uh, and you've got people who can think outside the box, obviously that's going to be one of the biggest difficulties, then you can have, uh, not straight away, but within a few years, revolutionary type solutions. Nick, anything you'd add to sort of what customers should be doing? Um, yeah, they got to get, get the developers involved early, but they also got to get procurement on board mm. early, earlier because you're going to accelerate the business, you know, which is what, what, what you're supposed to do, but it's going it, to come at a cost. <laughs> that's, that's right. So get them, you know, get them on board early. Yeah, that's good. Um, let's see, Linux first. Yep. All right. Sensible. Block. Well, this a lot is, of this stuff is, is block. Yes. I but mean, a lot of the stuff isn't. Well, it, it yeah. isn't. But uh, uh, I mean, there is opportunity again and up the stack of um, combining block and uh, and uh, file. So that's value add for so Micron's add customers. For, Good for, 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 for innovators in this space. Oh, yes. you see, yeah. Pure running hard that's after right. file. That's right. That's you know, right. NetApp obviously there. Yeah. Yes. So okay. Right. So you don't see any sort of issues there. That's that's not a uh, big concern. There are well, there are a lot of issues which. I mean for Micron. Not for for Micron. Yeah. Well, Micron is going to to have to look at these and can have to come up with, including these architectures for as you say block versus file, um, uh, IoT edge versus uh, centralized. Uh, there's a, there's a number of areas there where there's opportunity for innovation. I think the most important thing is to uh, allow other people into this ecosystem so that they can combine and add value together. Um, and that's going to be one of the challenges of creating that ecosystem. I mean, the, the power of any architecture, whether it be mainframe or HP or, the in, or Sun or whoever it is producing systems, is getting that ecosystem as rich and as uh, open as possible and, and able to compete, uh, able to contribute and make money by being in that ecosystem. All right, Nick, we'll give you last word on uh, the day. You sat through the presentations. And what were your big takeaways and any final thoughts? Um, the pace is accelerating. This is somebody just stepped on the, the, the accelerator. Yeah. Um, it, it gonna accelerate and accelerate and accelerate even more and um, hang on to your hats. Yeah, well, we were early on, I have to say, toot our horn a bit in the, in the, in the flash, and David, you, you know, projected sort of the demise of certain segments of, of, of spinning disk, but that's sort of less relevant, really, than the business impact that we talked about. And of course, by the way, there are people who are ch still continue to challenge the, those assertions. Uh, there's guys like Infinidat that are out there saying, hey, we can smoke yeah, sure. all these flash guys, so I would yeah. challenge Infinidat, okay, we'll prove it. You know, let's see the benchmarks and let's, you know, see the customers and the references. And so there's a role uh, for this for many, many, many years for magnetic in general is yeah. for many years. So, it, it, the, you know, old technologies never die. They uh, just fade away. Well, we'll see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, like Nick said, stay, hang on, stay tuned. All right. That's a wrap, everybody. This is uh, the Cube uh, coverage from Micron Summit. Check out siliconangle.tv, uh, thecube.net. Check out cube365.net slash micron. We've got a site up uh, specific to this event. Obviously check out wikibon.com uh, and check out siliconangle.com for all the news uh, related to this and other announcements, news of the day. Thanks for watching everybody. This is a wrap, this is a cube. We're out from New York City. Thank you. Robert Hershevik.